So we have this liquidity here, this high, and this high. That's what I was looking at. If you looked at this high and this high, that's not meeting the criteria that makes what? A high probability, uh, relative equal high, because this high is slightly higher than that one. But this high is obvious, and you can see it. And it rallies up off of the inversion of fair value gap here, hits that liquidity. We don't have a we don't have a first presentation of a fair value gap yet. That doesn't occur until here. So this candlestick here is 9:30. This run up, and then as soon as this candlestick here closes, you cannot qualify that as a fair value gap to use. And this blue shaded box, we're going to take that off because it's the opening range gap. But this is not a fair value gap because the the imbalance candle or out of a three series candle pattern of fair value gap. The middle one is the inefficiency and the imbalance. So here, if you look at that 930 candle, that candle doesn't exist in regular trading hours. When you toggle that, you're not going to see the difference between 414 and where we open up at 930. That's that's two candles. You need a third one. And that's this one here. It's always going to be 931. So 931, that's the that's the earliest, that's the soonest the soonest <laughs> i had it right the first time the, the earliest formation of a fair value gap between 9 30 and 10 o'clock can only form based on the rules i'm giving you as early as 9 31. so you have to get that first minute past you and then you can create a fair value gap on the 9 31 candle if the 9 32 candle affords you the structure or the presentation of a fair value gap and we don't have that here the first formation of it is here at 9.35. At 9.35, this is a Judas swing, but this candle here is not a fair value gap. So you cancel that one out. Start looking for the fair value gap at 9.31 to form. Is there a fair value gap here? No. Is there one here? No. 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 This one isn't one because this candlestick overlaps with the previous candle's low. So there's no gap there. This one, we break down, and the next candle, we open and have a run up to this high here. I'll take this away so you can see it. See the fair value gap now? It's obvious, right? Nothing in here is a fair value gap until here. So your fair value gap for Wednesday, August 28, 2024, forms on the 9.35 one-minute candle. So now we break down below the candle I tell you before this run up, that's an inversion fair value gap. And then I told you that this is the minor buy side liquidity at that price level right there. So it was based on this high and that high being relatively equal highs. So the buy stops up here is a minor buy side liquidity pool. The market breaks lower into the inversion fair value gap. Are we trying to buy it? If it's an inversion fair value gap formed like this, no, we're waiting. We want to see it trade down. And what does that give us then? It gives us the potential to see if it goes below it. And then does it allow for this same fair value gap to stave off any higher prices? But if the market trades just outside of your PD array, which is this one here, which was called an inversion fair value gap. It rallies up and just outside of the inversion fair value gap, this wick comes all the way back up to first presentation. That's the, that's the fair value gap here. So we went below the inversion fair value gap. We left the opening range gap, which I'll show you in a moment, but we're, going, we're trading up into it here. And I said, when it gets there like that, I said, it's hitting the bottom of the opening range gap and inversion fair value gap look for august 16th new day opening gap and august 27th maybe getting down into that on the first pay, on driving down in there the bottom of the opening range gap now if we go into uh regular trading hours go over here and toggle that that's this big candle here see that now if you're using regular trading hours you can see how opening at 9 30 here and then closing up here and then using the previous candle at 4 5th, I'm sorry, 4.14 on Tuesday. Notice the time at the bottom of the chart down here. It's 4.14 yesterday, Tuesday. And then we open down here. So the gap is from where we settled at 4.14 and where we opened. That's the opening range gap. This is a discount gap. That means it's an open that's lower than where we settled previous day. And then it's likely to do what? Half of that range within the first 30 minutes of trading. So you annotate it here, put it on the opening price, and you draw it up to the settlement price, and you make your little rectangle here. I'm looking at from that opening price here, can it get back to that price level here? So if I'm expecting that to occur, what am I expecting in price? Buy side delivery. That means up movement in price. 
going higher, rallying basically. So it needs to go to that price level here, but minimum expectation is in the first 30 minutes, 70% chance that it's going to go half of that gaps range. Here's electronic trading opening at 930. That lower level also happens to be new day opening gap from yesterday at 6 p.m. Eastern time and the difference between 5 p.m. yesterday's closing price. It's only two ticks. That two tick here is overlapping with half of that opening range gap. See that? So we open, half the gap is hit, full closure of the gap is hit, and then it does this, sweeps above the buy side here and over here. So there's two things happening there. You can be a buyer inside this inversion fair value gap because at this point here, there, it's going to act as a reclaimed fair value gap. Initially, it should, if you don't know what you're doing, you're not, you're not going to find success here. It trades through it. Then we get to the time of day when it needs to be delivering. It's consolidating in here. It's an inversion fair value gap, meaning the original classification was it should be expected to be used as like a, 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 a level to send price higher. It's a discount. So it's something to buy. But when it does this run to the liquidity, if we break down below it, it's used as a catalyst to send us as a premium and then drive prices lower. Here, it's a bullish fair value gap. It's not the right time to take that trade. We're minutes before what? 9.30 open. So the market's just waiting. And then when you're in here, you're right before the opening bell, minutes before the opening bell, just so happened to be at a few minutes before 9.29 and at the opening bell, it opens and then hits the, the gap and what is it doing? It's using it as its original form over here, but only going into the buy side I outlined. I'm more inclined to use that gap as an inversion fair value gap. I want to see it do this. If it happens to go below it and then it leaves behind in its wake, dropping down, it creates that fair value gap right here that's shaded. So we have two things forming there. We have the bottom of that blue box, which is the opening range gap low, which in this case is the opening price at 930. And then we have the return back into this gap here on that pass. So two things are happening right there on this. We're trading into the inversion fair value gap. So you could be selling short here, midpoint, and then the drawdown is, can you take that trade if it trades up into this gap? If you can't, try to get a fill just below or the low of that first fair value gap that forms because the narrative is set in motion now. We have a shift in market structure. Liquidity has been taken here to here in return. That, that low of the opening range gap being tagged right there is doing two things. It's returning back to the opening price at 930 and it's going to the first fair value gap that formed between specific 931 and 10 o'clock. Does it, look closely, does it close the upper half of that gap? No. Isn't that what you want? Yes. So what happens if when it trades up there and you don't get into it there because it's too fast or you're just not on the game, like you just can't bring yourself to enter the trade. When it trades back down into the inversion fair value gap, you can short there and use what, what this high is plus one tick. How can I, how can I trust that ICT? This is going to act as an inversion fair, fair value gap. And if it's going to run up here with a wick, because we opened here on this candle, it opened there. And to get to that level here in one candle, if it's going to go lower, chances are this is going to form some kind of a wick, right? So if that forms a wick and you're trading in it here, you're putting your stop loss one tick above the high. What should form after that wick? Worst case scenario, another candle with a wick that's only going to go about halfway of this wick. But it doesn't even give us another candlestick to even try to approach outside the other end of this or the high of the inversion fair value gap. So it's really heavy because it goes up there, hits the first fair value gap that I taught you, and we hit it, it hammers it, and drops down. Look what else happens. We have this old area of new week opening gap, new day opening gap. Look how many times they've used these levels. How many times it's traversed back and forward and through. But when there's time of day that I'm teaching you to focus on, when the algorithm will refer to these levels as key important factors and arrays, they use them. New day opening gap, low the bodies, heading the low of it, dropping down, leaving this gap here. This gap is a breakaway gap. What makes this gap a breakaway gap? Because we've had this initial run that starts the run lower. If the market's gonna to trade to a first presentation, fair value gap between 9.31 and 10 o'clock, and it's gonna drop, once it starts to run, you're anticipating 
this occurring. This is like a signature like, yes, now we're going to be really running. You don't want to see that close in. It can come back up there and close it and then drop, you know, drop later on. It's just better that it doesn't. Sometimes you've seen my trade executions where I'll annotate something. Ideally, I want to see this stay unfilled and I'll knock it as a, a, a breakaway gap. Sometimes it goes down and fills it and then still does where I want it to go. It's just better. It's just like a sugar, uh, sugar coating, a cherry on top to what you're already doing right. Okay. The price is going to go where you think it's going to go if the trade's right. But these are things that you really want to have as hallmarks in your winning trades.